Jesse Jane Duff joins us. She's a retired gunnery sergeant in the Marine Corps and a senior fellow at the London Center for Policy Research. So, uh, Jesse, uh, from a military perspective, what do you make uh, of this attack and what do you think will come next? Well, all of the forces right now in the Middle East are probably on high alert. That is going without question, which means that there is very high measure in getting on and off the posts, and they're ensuring that everybody is cleared, that they're capable of entering the bases. Uh, when you're on high alert like this, you're really in a very strategic mode of being able to operate quickly and deploy rapidly. Um, not only that, what I do also expect out of this is that the U.S. is probably not going to respond to this because, as we've heard repeatedly over and over, we wonder if this was a deliberate attempt not to hit any U.S. personnel. Iran knows without any question that we are the world's mightiest force out there in throughout the world and that we would decimate them if they put any damage on our American lives. So right now, for them to suggest, which we've heard by one of the other analysts, that there were approximately 80 Americans that were killed in this, this is to keep the appeasement within the mullahs and the folks that were supporting uh, any type of uh, reprisal against the U.S. and to ensure that the Iranian people feel that their country is strong and bold against the evil Satan of the United States of America. But outside of that, uh, this was really just their way of flexing a little, and we'll have to wait and see tomorrow morning how President Trump reacts. Do you, uh, so you're in the camp that says that basically they were able to aim these potentially into a, a, a abandoned barren area, and they knew where American troops were, not to kill any of our, our, of our troops. Well, the fact that none of their missiles struck any targets, uh, it would have been one thing if one had hit a direct hit and maybe four or five had missed, but none hit. So that does lead me to believe that this was strategic on their part because they know that we will retaliate. As another analyst had also said, there have been multiple attacks by Iran against uh, the oil tankers, against the Saudi oil fields. And what we saw was President Trump was very refreshing from taking any action against them other than sending troops to Saudi Arabia to assist with drone attacks, to assist with any type of air assault. But outside of that, we haven't put troops on the ground, per se, to go fight arm in arm against the Iraqi forces. Iraqi forces right now are probably uh, themselves nervous because they know that American forces are well-trained, we have the best equipment in the world, and they wouldn't withstand a very uh, confrontational battle with our forces. Is this a wake-up call to them? You know, you had the Iraqi parliament voting to uh, expel our troops. Uh, do you think they will, that they will actually do that and follow through on that? Or do you think they'll, you know, negotiate back and realize what they're facing when they've, they've got ballistic missiles pounding into their soil? Well, the thing is with uh, with Iraq, Iraq has Sunni and Shia. The Shia themselves have often been supported by the Iranian Shia. And when you have Shia influence in Iraq as heavily as we do, it wasn't a surprise to me that they voted for the U.S. personnel to leave. However, the Sunni and the Kurds did not vote to have U.S. personnel leave. I think more of this was posturing by those Iraqi Shia to appease to those that they are trying to keep happy in Iran. But at the end of the day, they know that this is not the path they want to go down because siding with Iran will not benefit them economically, will not benefit them in prosperity. And they know that the path they want to go is not going to be to become a dominant world terroristic organization such as Iran has become. They don't want to be the next world le world's leading sponsor of terrorism. So I don't think that Iraq is going to follow through on that, nor will President Trump at this very moment, because right now we have U.S. forces that are there to to ensure that we do not have ISIS rise again, which will threaten those very Shia in Iraq. So uh, it's a quandary for Iraq, I'm sure, because of their Shia-Sunni conflicts that they have internally. But at the end, they want U.S. support because they want to become part of the world and be able to take care of themselves and not have Iran or any mm -hmm. other country control them. Yeah, we certainly see uh, what Iran is capable of doing with what they did tonight and have done, have a history of yes. doing throughout the world. Jesse Jane Duff, uh, as always. Jesse, good to see you. Thank you for joining you, us Eric. tonight.